Er ist uh, the founder of narrative of business of stories. Um, um, company that is multi multinational um, and um, they are working with um, many brands like um, Facebook, LinkedIn and Microsoft as well. And um, Angeli have um, two um, books um, published um, till now. Um, it's the Unleashed Your Voice and Success Mindset Anatology. Um, both are um, uh, bestseller uh, from USA Today and Wall Street Journal. And um, I'm very proud that she can <laughs> say something about um, storytelling today. And I give it to you, Anjali. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. So you are a social startup founder based in Egypt. And I run a story practice that helps people like yourself not become the best kept secret. What that means is that your story is told, it's shared, and you, and you really thrive in the work that you do. The trigger to that, the catalyst to that, is really storytelling. So I said to you that you are based in Egypt and I am based in Singapore. So I was looking at the map this morning and I realized that if I was to take the area of Singapore and just make it like one toilet roll, if the area of Singapore is one toilet roll, then the area of Egypt is 1,376 toilet rolls. I will never have that many toilet rolls in my house, but that's the magnitude of the place that you are in. So it's a lot, lot bigger than Singapore. And there you go. I have given you your very first lesson in storytelling. As a social startup, when you tell your story, you will always have this desire to want to talk about the magnitude of the social impact you're having. So, you know, we are helping 7 million, 5 million, 2,000, like you'll use a lot of data and a lot of number to establish the magnitude of the goodness of the work that you are doing. And your well-researched, well-analyzed data does help you tell the story, but mostly it falls on deaf ears. You know why? It falls on deaf ears because human beings actually only understand and connect with numbers when the numbers have a story around it. And the story is mostly in two things for the numbers. The first thing I'm going to teach you about is called subitizing. Now, I'm not sure how many of you know what subitizing is, but subitizing is essentially your ability to be able to look at something and count it and be able to tell what the number is without having to count it. For example, if I showed you these three pens, you know it's three. You're not going to count one, two, three. Without having to count, can you really tell the number? In our ability to tell numbers, mostly we can only get up to five, not more than that. Do you know a lot of languages actually don't have words for after five? The numbers, the words for the numbers finish at the number five. So subitizing becomes really, really important to be able to tell your story. Now, let me give you an example. If I said to you, 40% of the people in US do not wash their hands after they use the bathroom. That means nothing to the person who's listening. But if you said, out of the five people you shake your hands with, most likely two of them have not washed their hands after using the bathroom. That is subitizing. You would suddenly go, ew actually elicits an emotional response from you and makes you understand what that number. Are you able to hear me? 
Are you able to hear me? Okay. So for yes, those of you who are listening to me, just put yourself on mute for a little while and then I'll let you talk. Okay. We will definitely have Q&A afterwards. But for the moment I'm talking, I'll let you put yourself on mute. You know, I'm just, I just like listening to my own voice for a little bit and then I'll listen to your voice. Um, so remember when I said to you, if the area of Singapore is one toilet paper roll, do you remember how many toilet paper rolls I said was Egypt? Can you put that answer for me in the chat box? Do you remember the number? Does anybody remember the number? Ha! <laughs> I'm smiling because uh, some of you are close, but most of you are far off or not even right. But that's human. It was 1,373, or I would have probably just said 1,327, something like that. But only one of you, which is Hussein's, gotten closer to it. Most of you are very, very far off. But you know what? That's very, very human to actually forget. Did you see how I moved from 1,373 to a lot. You're a lot bigger. That is our human tendency with numbers. We will just say till five and then say a lot. It's a habit for us to say a lot. That is how we explain numbers because we don't have the ability to be able to make meaning and make the numbers concrete after the number five. Now, we're going to do one more exercise so that you can understand how to tell a story about number. So at the moment, I'm talking to you about subitizing the number. Subitizing essentially means you look at something like I show you a bowl with three goldfish in it. You can just go one, two, three. That's those are the three goldfish. You don't have to count them. You know it's three without having to count them. So the point here is that how do you take the magnitude of your social startup, the social impact your, your startup has, and you subitize the number so that it actually brings meaning? Now, you all know that one billion is bigger than one million, but how much bigger is not something we know or not something we actually even care to understand properly. So now if I said to you that you won a lottery of one million dollars and every day you have to spend fifty thousand dollars from this one million dollar. So one more time, if I said to you, you have won a lottery of one million dollars and every day you have to spend $50,000 of this $1 million. That is the condition for you to get this lottery amount. Can you tell me how many days it'll take for you to finish that money? One more time, $1 million. Every day you have to spend 50,000. Okay, not bad, 20 days. Now I will increase the amount of your lottery. You have now won a lottery worth one billion dollars. Same condition. Every day you get to spend fifty thousand dollars. Can you guess how long will it take for you to actually spend that money? Tough one, hey? So Muhammad is saying twenty thousand days. Um, in a nutshell, it takes you fifty-five years to spend that money. Now, isn't that shocking? Now you go, whoa, you understand the magnitude and the story of the number. So there are two things that you're going to keep in mind in the numbers you will associate in the social startup story you will tell. The first thing you'll keep in mind is how do I subitize it? How do I make it smaller so that people understand? Remember that story? of 40% of the people don't wash their hands after using bathroom in the United States. We're not from there, so we don't care, but we should know. Um, and the second thing is, how do you insert an emotional feeling with the number? One million dollar takes me 20 days. If I spend 50,000 every day, 
one billion will take me 55 years. Now that makes me go, oh my God, I'm super surprised by that. If you can't subitize, and if you can't bring out a feeling with the number that you're sharing with your social startup story, most likely the story you tell, whether that be the grand finals, where the 10 social selected social startups will be sharing the story, or whether that be to the VCs, or whether that would be when you actually become, a, become about to become a unicorn, you numbers will actually fall on deaf ears. So don't go billion, trillion, thousands at all. Subitize, insert feelings. That's the lesson number one I wanted to share with you today. I want to now officially say to you, welcome to this storytelling and pitch session. Um, I have in total planned three key lessons uh, with a very clear goal in mind that I have. Uh, the session, the three key things would be in a short term, I want to make sure that you become the top 10 startups who will have the honor to pitch in front of uh, a high class jury in the Sultan Hussein Ka uh, Kemal Palace in Cairo um, on the 29th of June, I think it is. And in the long term, you're able to use the storytelling tips and tricks that I give you today um, to uh, present to the VCs and also keep using these tips and tricks that I share with you for your social startup story for the time to come until it becomes a big conglomerate. And I truly hope that for all of you. Um, so we've covered one lesson. I've got two more lessons for you today. OK, so my second lesson is about something that you will most definitely get wrong with storytelling. I'm so sorry to say this, but almost always everybody gets this bit wrong with storytelling. Now, you all know what is this? I mean, you have some of the best breads in your country. Um, I still remember going to Egypt many years ago and the only thing I ate there was bread. Um, because I love the bread so much. But what I just showed you was sliced bread. And I'm going to tell you the story of sliced bread and then make the point of what you can learn from this story and apply that to your social startup story. Okay, so a gentleman by the name of Otto Frederick Ravader came up with the sliced bread machine in the year 1912. You know that big machine that actually sliced the bread? It was invented in 1912 by a gentleman by the name of Otto Frederick Rovader. Now, when this machine came out, it was a total dud for 15 years. Nobody bought the machine. He made the machine, he told the story of the machine, nobody bought it. 15 years later, a company called Wonder Bread, which is a big company for breads in the US, came along and brought sliced bread to our dining tables, if not twice, at least once a day. It's the same thing. How did Otto Frederick Rauerberg was not able to sell the bread? And what did Wonder Bread do that sliced bread became a phenomenon? It's what we always do wrong with what we are trying to sell. What we end up doing is we start telling the story of the making, the story of the patent, the story of the machinery, the story of the metal, the story of things that we are very, very passionate about. But nobody cares. Wonder understood the story that people wanted to hear. Wonder knew that what people are wondering is, if I buy a loaf of bread, why? what's the difference? Why should I buy a sliced bread? Because if you buy a sliced bread, maybe the freshness will go. Wanda told a story that no, as soon as the bread is cut, it is packaged together and it is baked fresh. And then he told the story of convenience, how convenient the sliced bread would be to the, you know, the sanity and morale of the household. They told story after story, the kind of story that people wanted to hear. People didn't care about the machine. They cared about what the machine did for them. And then sliced bread became so famous that during the Second World War, 
when government banned the use of sliced bread machine and the sliced bread went off the shelves in US, there was a real, real, you know, like a revolution. People were begging to bring the sliced bread back because government wanted to use the, the metal that was used in the sliced bread machine for weaponry. There was a letter that a woman wrote and that letter got published in the New York Times. She wrote that I would like to tell you how important sliced bread is to the morale and morale and saneness of the household. My husband and four children are all in a rush during and after breakfast. Without ready sliced bread, I must do the slicing for toast, two pieces for each one, that's 10. For their lunches, I must cut by hand at least 20 slices for two sandwiches apiece. Then I make my own toast. That is 22 slices to be cut in a hurry before breakfast, packing the kids off to school, getting the husband out of the door for work. The ban is really driving us insane. Please bring the sliced bread back. Now, you can see how when you focus on what you want to tell versus what people want to hear are two very different things. Mostly what you would try to do with the story you will build for your social startup is you will tell a story of a problem that you're trying to solve. So can you use the chat box and tell me your social startup solves what problem? So as I keep talking, think about it and just use the chat box and tell me your social startup solves what problem? And that is a wrong approach. You don't tell a story about what problem your social startup solves. You tell a story about what emotion, undesired emotion that is comes because of the problem that you are trying to explain that your social startup removes. So the problem for people is convenience and the frustration that comes. They, the story was catering to removing the frustration, the issues with the family members if they did not have the convenience of sliced bread machine. It's never the problem. It's the feeling that is generated because of the problem that exists. So dig deeper. Don't just think about the problem. Think about the kind of undesired feelings or kind of undesired emotions that get elicited in people, that come out in people when that problem exists. Now, let me make this really clear to you from a modern corporate world environment. So you come up with a framework. This framework has got all the information that your boss needs to be able to give answers to stakeholders. Say tomorrow you have shareholders, okay? And you have to have a shareholder meeting and you have to give answers for shareholders questions every month. Now shareholders can ask questions of all sorts. And at the time when you're in the meeting and they ask you questions, you don't have the knowledge bank. So this framework gives you all the information. The problem you're solving is lack of information, but truly the story is in making sure that you tell your boss it removes those embarrassing moments when we come across like we don't know what we are doing. It's the feeling that is generated because of the problem that your social startup is solving. That is what the story should be based on because people don't chase goals. They cho chase identities. So if you're trying to sell your social startup to someone, um, you have to show them what they can become by using what you are trying to propose as an idea. So the goal could be to write a book, but author is the identity. The goal could be to run a marathon, but marathoner is the identity. The goal could be to tell a story, but to be a change maker with a story by storytelling is the identity. Always think, what's the identity the people who are listening to me want to become? What is the feeling I need to remove that is generated by the problem that exists? So disability and inclusion, thank you so much, whosoever has put that. So when you tell the story, you have to dig deep and get really into figuring out what's the feeling 
it actually generates when that problem occurs for people. How do they feel? Do they feel embarrassed? Do they feel lack of belonging? Like what do they feel? And the identity they choose is to want to feel as normal as everyone, right? So you have to dig deep and really figure out the feeling, problem, feeling, and identity. Quick revision for all of you. We started off today by saying that if your social startup has a number in it, number that you use to actually really talk about the impact or the magnitude of the impact or what is the, what is the potential of your social startup, mostly you will have numbers to bring that to life. You're going to use two things to ensure that your numbers have a story. Subitizing it, subitizing means I see something and I know the number. I don't have to count. Subitizing can really only happen till five. If it's more than five, people will tend to say lots. So you will have to find ways to bring meaning to that number by making it smaller and smaller and smaller. The other thing is, Will your number elicit an emotional response? One billion surely is bigger than one million. But how much bigger? If I get you to spend $50,000 a day, it takes you 20 days to spend one million. It'll take you 55 years to spend 50,000 if I gave you one billion dollar. That just simply makes you go, whoa. And that's the, uh, the response you want your audiences to elicit. That was lesson number one. Lesson number two that we worked on today was the thing that you will always get wrong with storytelling is you will try to solve a problem. A problem is mostly not associated with people as strongly as a feeling is. Therefore, you look at the problem you think about what is the feeling associated that gets generated when this problem occurs. You focus on the feeling. And once you focus on the feeling, you think about what's the identity this person chases. This person wants to be X, Y, Z. I'm going to help through my social startup story. I'm going to help this person become that person. Give them the identity they chase, not the goal. Remember, it could be a goal to write a book, but author is the identity people chase. It could be a goal to run a marathon, but marathoner is the identity that people chase. Give them that identity. So far, we have covered this. Now, I'm going to move to telling you that they're sharing with you that there are various kinds of identities that a storyteller has. Now, you will not be covering all of these in the session today, but I'll be covering at least four with you in the next step. So if you look at this chart over here, this diagram over here, sorry, this is not a chart. This is a storyteller. You are the storyteller, the change maker for your social startup. If you really want to tell a good story, you have to be able to wear five different hats. The fifth hat is not something we are going to talk about today because the fifth hat is mostly when you have thousands of people you need to bring along on the journey with you. Uh, your teams, worldwide, 36 offices, 35,000 staff. We pray that you get there, but it's not something that we need to look into today. But let's look at identity number one, identity number two, three, and four. What I told you about the feeling and the identity and the problem is a marketer's hat. Marketers are super good at doing this. Remember those shampoo ads that we've seen? That it's not just about your hair becoming nice with shampoo. It's the confidence you get in a meeting when your hair is looking all nice. So when you look at the problem, the feeling and the identity, you wear a marketer's hat. I'm going to move to the next hat now. The next hat is the one that I'm going to discuss now is a journalist's hat. Now, journalists, what do they do? Journalists go and find stories. Then they tell what's the story ha that is happening on the ground, right? So when you come up with your social startup story and you want to share the feelings, the identity and the problems in the story, you will 
tend to, by default, to just share your own point of view. But your success in front of your audiences lies in the fact if you go on the ground, talk to your potential customers, to talk to your potential users of your technology that you're developing or whatever startup uh, idea you have, and you find real stories from the ground. That's what journalists go do. They go down in the trenches and they find information, right? So I'm going to demonstrate this part to you. Please go down to the people, talk to them, find moments. I will give you one example of a startup. Okay, so this is me being a journalist, going and finding a story to make a point. If I want to make a point that the same, based on the geography you are, your story would change, even if your idea is the same. Your story can change based on which geography you are in. And I tell you this story to bring this point to life. In 2013, a very famous car technology company, a company that actually has a technology for you to be able to book car service, um, was almost becoming really successful, was quite successful in the different parts of the world. And the story they always told was that of convenience. The convenience was that you have the technology, you open the app, you book the app, uh, through the app you book it you don't have to take a look for money the the you know your credit card get deducts the money we all know this technology okay the same company in 2013 goes to south america they tell the story of convenience because that's what the story was but in south america for some reason this story is not clicking nobody is subscribing to their services because they just did not resonate with the story of convenience. They decided they're going to wear the journalist hat, they're going to go down to the ground, and they're going to start talking about what's the problem here. Why would people, what's, what's the feeling that we need to save the people from, and what's the identity they are chasing? When they wore the journalist hat, they figured out that in South America, nobody was going to use the technology for convenience. But they will use the technology if you told the story of safety. Every time a car comes, it's a new number plate, a new car, a new driver. And if they use this service, they could be safe. That's the story that made this particular startup really successful in South America. It's the story of convenience that made them successful in the rest of the world. But it was the story of safety that made them su successful in South America. Now, what did I do here? I became a journalist. I went on the ground. These people went on the ground, had conversations, reflected, and then figured out what is it exactly the story that people want to hear. One of the biggest mistakes you will make is you'll sit in the boardroom and you will, in your own head, along with people like you, figure out the story that you want to tell, the message you want to tell. And that almost always is the wrong story. Your success with your social startup story only comes to life when you have got enough data, enough conversation on the ground to prove that that is really what these people are looking for. You are going to use those stories that you collect on the ground in your social startup pitch. We went there, we had this conversation, this is what we learned. That is what we call the insightful idea, not the idea that we sat in the boardroom and discussed and came up with, because we think that is the story. In my years, 10 years of doing this, um, I have had the privilege to work with many corporates, but also with startups, and I can tell you 90% of the time, the story we thought was the story was not the story, and when we went on the ground and we actually became journalists and started to talk to people, we realized we always had our key message wrong, almost always. So you have to be journalist and you really need to go down and on the ground. So that's how you become a journalist. Now, once you find that moment, a journalist is not essentially a reporter, okay? So you can be a journalist and a reporter. Now I'm talking about the fourth identity, okay? The fourth, the fourth hat, which is a reporter. So sometimes journalists are reporters and sometimes they're not. What's the difference? 
Journalists will find a story, but they also need to now know how to tell the story well. How do you structure the story so that I can tell it well? Just knowing the story does not guarantee that you can actually tell the story well. Therefore, you have to be a reporter too. A reporter knows how to structure the story well to tell it to the audiences. Now, if you brought, uh, if you brought a pen and a paper today to take some notes, this is the time uh, to take some notes. Okay, I'm going to give you a very simple story structure that you can use once you found the story. How would you structure that story? Um, we, I can also send you a designed um, framework after the session so that they, they can forward that to you. Uh, the team can forward that to you. So let's have a look. Are we ready? There are seven things in a story structure and we're going to chat here. OK, so it's not just me talking. I'm going to speak to you. You're going to use the chat box and we're going to learn this together. Uh, for those of you who have questions bubbling in your head, um, give me till 647 or so and then we'll chat and have questions. OK, um, OK, let's get started. Now we are going to become a reporter. Reporters know how to tell a story. Reporters are those people who get given mic in front of the camera and go tell, 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 quickly now tell. So they're able to now really put the story well together. Most stories, most stories that are told with a purpose in mind start off either with a calendar marker, time marker, or a globe marker. What is a time marker? What is a calendar marker? What is a globe marker? A time marker is a reference to time. Five years ago, two years ago, this morning, uh, last night, just this afternoon. It's a reference to time. Your stories will start with a reference to time. Globe markers are in Los Angeles, in Taipei, in Cairo, and calendar markers are 19th of August 2019, something you can actually go and spot in a calendar. Most stories that are told with a specific purpose in mind, you've been a journalist, you've gone and found details. Now it's time for you to stand up in front of the VCs and tell your story. You're going to start either with a time marker, calendar marker, or a very clear globe marker. You'll say, okay, in preparation to really in prep in our preparation for this session or in our preparation to really validate the idea we had for our social startup, we had a chat to close to 90 people on the ground. This was June 2018. OK, see how I started June 2018. What is June 2018? Everybody out of out of calendar marker, time marker and globe marker. What is June 2018 out of the three? Use the chat box and tell me. If I say in June 2018, is it a calendar marker? Is it a globe marker or is it a time marker? It is it is a calendar marker. Some people actually refer to it as a time marker also, which is absolutely fine. These are not rules. These are guidelines. Um, now, once you've got that, then your story must activate people's visualization not acting activating visualization literally is how you engage people so you're going to take these people to some place you're going to say very simple things you're not a performance art storyteller who's going to say the sun was shining and the clouds were coming and the birds were jumping no need you're in a professional setting so what you'll do is you'll say okay so we went down um to an orphanage or we went down to the school for disabled or we went down to um, meet up with women or meet up with people who are currently being treated for body health issues to a hospital or to a care center. The moment I say care center, the moment I say school, the moment I say hospital, it activates your visualization. It takes you to some place. If I say to you the word Paris, what comes to your mind? Use the chat box to tell me what comes to your mind if I say Paris. 
Eiffel Tower, that's right. Love, croissant, wine, romance. Somebody the other day said to me, dirty streets. For the first time I heard that. Maybe that's true too. <laughs> so all of you, whatever you would say about Paris, it's an image that pops up in your head. We don't think in words, we think in images. Therefore, if you want to capture the attention of the people who are listening to you, you need to give them some place you can take them to. Take them to that place where your social startup is coming, okay? Take them, if you're giving a shampoo girl story example, talk, okay, this girl gets up, gets into the bus, she's going to work today, and she arrives in the meeting room, and then her hair is all sticky, okay? So take me to the meeting room. Now, I'm gonna get slightly more technical here. The thing you have to use is called a schema. Schema is a term used by psychologists. It's the existing layers of memory in your in the people who are listening to their head. So you have to think, who is listening to me today? What would they have already experienced that I can use? So people normally have experienced what a school looks like. They all know what an aeroplane looks like. They know what an airport looks like. They know what a kitchen looks like. They know what an orphanage looks like. So I'm going to take them to a place that I know what it looks like. For example, if I said to my husband, outside of the Prada showroom, he'll have no clue what that looks like. It's not going to work. But if I said to him, oh, you know, outside of the emergency operation theater, he knows what that looks like because he works in, in the hospital all the time. You know, so you have to be able to Figure out what's the schema I'm going to use. What is the existing layer of the memory? Just one word, bring them there. So far, start with a time marker, globe marker or calendar marker. Activate people's visualization. You're right now learning how to be a reporter, how to structure your story that you have found as a journalist really well and tell it. Okay, let's move next. Stories are about people. Do not not tell stories about people, okay? Stories are not about organizations. Stories are not about companies, departments. Stories are about people. And you have to be able to create identifiable victims in this, people that people can identify with. If I said to you, 4,000 people died as a result of a bridge collapsing in Bangladesh last week, that does not resonate with you as much as if I said to you, last week, a bridge collapsed in Bangladesh, a gentleman by the name of Mohan was 42 years old, died, and along with him, 4,000 other workers who were working in that vicinity died too. Now, the death of Mohan is a tragedy, but death of 4,000 people alone is a statistic. Therefore, the stories have to zoom down to individuals. You may be solving the problem of disability for close to 13,000, 14,000 people, but you're going to tell the story of Samantha, who is the representation of those 13,000 people there. And Samantha is going to be the carrier of that feeling that your social startup is trying to remove. You're going to start with a specific moment in August 2019, when you had a conversation with her, you will not leverage too much of emotion and character. You will leverage a lot more of the analysis of what's the point of the story. Don't get caught up in a stage style storytelling where we are really getting caught in the character and the emotion. What I want you to do is to use the character and the emotion in the story only as a catalyst for feeling but stay focused on what is the point you're trying to make. So it's not the character that's the hero of your story. The hero of the story is how do you make Samantha and many others who are like her, their life better. It's the point you make is the key character, the hero of your story, okay? So you're not making a movie. Don't get caught up in the character and the feeling, use them but actually make a point, a solid point with the story. Okay, mostly in oral stories, we try to stick to two characters, not more than that, because what we notice is if we go to three characters, it becomes super confusing. All right, 
stories must have emotions. And, you know, every time I talk about emotions, people like the idea of having an emotional story, but they don't know what to do and how to put emotion into a story. What you have to remember is that I am going to describe the emotion in the story, not display the emotion in the story. OK, you're going to describe the emotion. This was frustrating. This was insightful. This was um, really filled, fills people with anxiety. Describe the emotion as a storyteller in a professional setting who is trying to get VCs to actually invest in your social idea. We want you to describe the emotion, not to display the emotion, because the VC will invest in you if they know there's money to be made, not because you are too kind and you feel sorry for other people. OK, you have to describe the emotion. Your idea has to be close to your heart, but it has to have a business proposition and a value there, too. OK, now stories are series of connected events. What do I mean by this? Stories are not examples. If you just told me an example of the initiative that my social startup ran to help people was that campaign, that's an example. That's not a story. A story has this happened, that happened, that happened, this happened. There are series of events in it. So you have to take people through a series of events. Examples are great for credibility. Stories are super insightful because you take people through what happened. Therefore, you actually bring out the insight. If you want to make a story really rich, elongate the series of events. Only have two to three minutes, shrink the series of events. We do that all the time, depending on who we are speaking to. I pray to God you get put on TED stage to talk about your social startup. I will elongate the series of stories event in that. But if you get put in front of the VCs for investment, I will shrink the series of events because I want to stay focused on the on on the business proposition of the social startup in that case. All right, um, stories must have something unexpected, something that you did not expect to happen that happened. Um, who can tell me in the car technology company that I talked to you about what was the unexpected? What was the thing that we did not expect to happen that happened? A story is only insightful. If there is something that you did not expect to happen, that happened. Who can tell me what was unexpected in the car story that I told you? Remember, I told you the car. It's not. It, no, it's not. It's not Tesla. The car. I told you a story about a technology that allows you to book a taxi service using car. Um, you know, using. Uh, it, I'm not allowed to say the name, but it is that name. I won't say, but it is that name. But tell me what was the unexpected in that? So we knew that the story was on convenience, but what was that we did not expect to happen that happened? Remember when they went to South America, something happened? What was the story in South America that they needed to tell? About what? It was not convenience. Super Hassan, very good. Very, very good. I'm very glad you're all awake and you're listening to me. I love you all for that. OK. <laughs> OK, um, so unexpected is really important in a story. If I just said to you, this car company had a story on convenience, went and told the story in different parts of the world, then went to South America, told the same story and became successful. That's not a story because it's just to be expected that that would happen. It only becomes a story because something unexpected happens. What was the unexpected in the sliced bread story? What was the unexpected? Otto Frederick Robader told the story of the machine. This is how our machine is. This is what it can do. Wander said, who is going to buy machine? People will buy the convenience of sliced bread. That was the unexpected, right? OK, finally, you have to really, really know what exactly is the message of your social startup that you're trying to sell? What's the point? What exactly is the key message that actually centers around your social startup? Then only you can put those things around. This is the bitter medicine. If you just said, this is what my social startup does, that's the key message around it. People will be like, yeah, okay. 
But when you put a story around it with all the other elements that I told you, the time marker, the globe marker, the activation of visualization, the people, the dialogue, the series of um, um, series of connected events, the unexpected, that is the yogurt around the bitter message that becomes very easy for you to then digest the message. So you know that tablet that we don't like to take even though it's good for us? Then our mothers used to actually put that tablet in a yogurt and say, now you eat. That yogurt is the story and the key message around your social startup is the core of it. I'm going to do a quick revision, then over to you for questions. What we have covered today are three key things about storytelling. Firstly, wherever you see a number, you will look for two things. You tell me in the chat box. What are the two things you would look to create a story around those numbers, everybody? Tell me the two things I mentioned to you. I said every time in your social startup story, there is a number, you will try to do these two things. Please use the chat box and tell me what were the two things I told you to look out for. Um, the first one started with S, the other one started with F. Yeah, not the, I hope, no, no nothing bad, okay? It's, it's something else I'm saying, so just, um, what were the two things I told you to look out for when you tell a story with, with numbers in it? Does anybody remember? Excellent, Mohammed. You're my favorite, favorite person in this room. Um, <laughs> so subitizing, exactly, and feelings. So ask yourself, in my social startup story, I have the following numbers. Am I subitizing it? Am I inserting feelings in it? Am I getting an emotional response from it? Um, health, very, very good. Uh, that's wonderful. That's the answer. Then I said to you, you have to wear the marketer's hat and really figure out what. Is it true or false? You look in your social startup idea, you look for the problem you're solving. True or false? In your social startup idea, you try to solve the problem. Is that true or that's false? When you wear a marketer's hat, what do you look out for? The problem or something else? It's false. Well done, you all. You look for what behind the problem? Noha, a big virtual hug to you. It is the feeling. Absolutely. So that's the problem, but that's the problem. What's the feeling it actually induces in people? My story has got to be built on the feeling that is with the problem. And then you help them achieve what through your story? People seek not achieving goals. They seek becoming, having a certain thing. What did I say? They want a certain dash. What is dash? Fill in the blank. They want a, I gave you the example of a marathoner. I gave you the example of an author. What is that? They seek an identity. You have to think very hard. My social startup idea gives them what identity? What does it make them? Don't go after goals, go after identity. Super, those are the first two lessons. Let's move to the final lesson that I gave you. In the final lesson, I said to you that to be able to get a good story, don't sit in the boardroom. Go down and actually become what? What are you going to do? To be able to find real good stories that support your social startup idea, what are you going to do? You are going to, Maha, very, very good. You're going to become a journalist, right? You're going to go have conversations. I can 100% guarantee you, your core idea about your social startup will change. The more conversations you have with people, the more it'll evolve, the better it will become. Once you become a journalist, it's not necessary. You can actually tell the story well. To tell a story well, you will put on what hat? What's the hat you put on to tell the story well? You become a reporter. Very good. You're all super champions. And to be able to become a good reporter, there is a story structure we learned. In the story structure, we had seven things. You don't have to tell me all. Just put in the chat box which is the one you remember. And let's see how quickly as a team we can remember all seven. There were seven things in the structure. Tell me just whichever one you remember, put it in the chat box. And Noha schema was the way to activate visualization. So I will take that as one. We're looking for seven things. Um, quickly put whatever you remember. The key message two, markers three. We've got visualization. We've got emotion four. Come on, everybody. We've already got markers. 
What else? What else in the story? Okay, emotions. Yes, far. Okay, we've got emotions already. Four, four. We're still sticking on four. Connected events. Five. Well done. Two more things. What were the two other things? We've covered key message already. People, very good. One more left. Something happened. There you go. All seven are there. I'm going to now take a pause. Um, there's so much I want to tell you, but I got to take a pause and let you ask me questions. So over to you for questions now, everybody. Okay, you can unmute yourself and talk to me now. Or you can just use your the chat box and ask any question that you might have. So please, please um, take your chance and uh, I think um, it's like... So we have like one raised hand. Uh, Yusuf, please uh, unmute and uh, ask a question. Hello. Hi, Yusuf. Hi. I can see you also, which is so lovely. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, I, I have a question that uh, maybe it's related to brand strategy a little bit, because uh, I learned this uh, uh, case study about a brand called Bonus. Uh, it started at the US and uh, we have in a brand strategy, we have this uh, something that called uh, brand ladder or benefit ladder and uh, they communicate first, they communicate attributes, the main attribute of the brand, um, then the benefit of the brand and the value of the brand and the value is actually the emotion part of the brand. So uh, at first they started communicating that use bonus because it's a wrinkle free, uh, you have wrinkle free clothes by using bonus. So they communicated a problem and for, or maybe you can say that they communicated as um, a feature that solves a, pro a problem. And then they raised it up uh, after a few years and they said, OK, use bonus because your clothes will look better. And after a few years, they said use bonus because you will look better and they raised it up to the emotional level. So you said uh, that uh, we communicate an emotion, not a problem uh, or uh, not uh, a solution for a problem. And uh, that a little bit confused me. So can you yeah, elaborate? Yeah, of course. Of course. So actually what you mentioned about bonus is very much aligned to what I said. So for as long as bonus will keep talking about wear wrinkle free clothes, they will not have as much success as when they will say, you can look better or get your confidence with bonus. Um, nail that next interview in a shirt uh, with bonus, right? Um, <clears throat> people only buy four types of stories, okay? So it's the four types of stories are, and bonus will come into that. The first story that can tell them, I will either save money or make a lot of money, okay? So that's the first type of story. The second story is, I will save time. That's the story people will buy. Third one is, I will look better. Look better is attractive or fitter or smarter or beautiful, or I will actually come across as somebody who's doing really well with work. And then finally, if the story tells them that I, that I, it, it gives me a proposition for someone I really care. So for example, your child, something about your child or your mother. If the story tells you about these, the only way the story would work is if it actually fits into these four. So what you're saying, eventually the success of bonus will only come from you look better. For as long as you definitely, in the process of finding your idea, you think of what is the problem you want to solve with that, right? What is the social startup? Uh, your, what's the problem it solves? But in the story you tell about that, you don't tell the problem. You tell about the feeling associated with the problem. So, of course, the finding begins with what's the problem. Is the problem big enough for the social startup to get the scale? Um, and then when you build the story, you don't, you don't think about the problem anymore. You think about the feeling associated, the negative feeling associated. Now, if I went in and said, you will look better, that's also not a complete story. I'll tell you why. You will look better can be a great tagline. It's a great tagline, but a great story of it would be um, nail your 
next interview or nail your next VC pitch by wearing clothes done up in bonus. Why? Because it takes you into an environment. Um, get the next award and be clicked by media. Um, your photos all over in the newspaper in clothes that are done by bonus. So I, ho I hope I'm making sense. The story is not about the problem. The story is about the feeling and the emotion of the problem. The, the, the proposition of social startup can start with the problem. Yes, thank you for, uh, so much. My pleasure, thank you. It's clear. It's clear. <laughs> Anybody else has any question? Um, I think uh, there was a question from Maha. She wrote in the chat um, uh, when you talked about um, the numbers. So um, here is one example. Do you mean, um, for example, 50% of the Egyptian population have disability? Um, should I translate it to 15 out of 100 have a disability? Because uh, you mentioned the, the example um, with the hand washing uh, in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in the US. So it's like easier to relate when you say, OK, uh, two people out of five um, are not washing their hands instead of having like yeah. a number. Correct, correct, yeah. So Maha, I'm firstly must say that I'm really happy to see that you're actually already thinking and putting things in, in line with what we have covered today. Now, 15 out of 100, 15% I would definitely avoid. Uh, 15 out of 100 is better, but it's not great. I'll tell you why, you got to think slightly harder. Why did I bring toilet roll papers, right? Why uh, two out of the five people who shake hands with you might not have washed their hands, yuck, yeah? Um, it it still is not strong enough, okay? Break it even further down into something. It, it lacks a feeling. There's no feeling in that, okay? Um, so could it be something like um, in your group of immediate cousins, most likely someone will have a disability if your family is that big a size, right? So bring it down to something like that, that actually triggers, it's much closer to them. It's a lot more closer to them. It elicits an emotional response. So this uh, subitizing takes a while for you to figure, but it, if you just go with 15 out of 100, will not elicit as much of an uh, emotional response. Or you can sort of say, uh, if you walked into a classroom, you only have to get to the third classroom to see a child with a disability, right? Now, again, I'll give you one more hint here. When you're subitizing, there are five types of things that actually really will gravitate people a lot more than others, okay? Um, you can take note of this. First is death or near death. If your subitizing involves death or near death, uh, example, that's good. If your subitizing involves children. Uh, so that's why when I said 15%, uh, you know, of the population, can you bring it down to a children's example or something like that? Um, then uh, famous people, these could be politicians, this could be celebrities. Um, then um, animals. Um, um, animals are again an interesting one for people when you're subitizing and the final one is really E it's very difficult to use it but it's something that gravitates the human mind a lot stronger which is sex um, now the thing that all these five things have they have our survival mode in it um, if there is no sex there are no children therefore we don't have human population human evolution if um, there is uh, the animals used to eat us up when we lived in a jungle. So we are always mindful of the mysterious nature of animals. Uh, famous people make decisions on whom our lives depend. Our politicians decide when we will not go for war, when we will not go for war, and therefore our lives are dependent on them. Um, uh, children is how the human race moves forward. Therefore, we gravitate towards them. Uh, death, obviously, is end of life. So when you're subitizing, saying 15 out of 100 is better, but it's not great. It doesn't connect with me. Find something that actually even more like, you know, it only has to be your first cousin's group 
or it only has to be, <clears throat> you know, um, you only have to walk uh, 500 meters from your home to be, or eat from your home to be able to find a house with someone with disability. You're going to have to think about how you can make it a lot more clearer for people. Um, I hope that helps. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. I, um, I, I think uh, uh, this this should help because uh, it was like very very clear, and um, I think um, everybody get the point. Um, also, like there was one comment <laughs> which I also wanted to mention from uh, So Hype um, that actually your speaking style is the best example for good storytelling. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. See, I have a real hate for people who practice storytelling and then don't tell stories. I have to live up to it, right? So all my all my sessions and my talks have lots of stories in them um, because then I demonstrate to you. So thank you for taking note of that and and I'm very glad it was it was something that you enjoyed. So is there anybody else who has an an open question? Um, so as mentioned, uh, now you have the chance. Um, I, I think like this masterclass was really like mind blowing and uh, I think a lot of people can really relate because most of them are like in the in the phase where they need to uh, to prepare their pitch deck where they need to optimize it they need to pitch in front of VCs uh, and to they need to define their story and uh, which is like in like you, you made so many great examples how to optimize how to really improve the, the the whole story around the the social startup it was like really like mind blowing i'm so glad thank you so much everybody um i share a lot of my work on social platforms um uh, i am on instagram i'm on linkedin i'm uh, those two platforms i use very solidly and i share tips and techniques all the time it's actually my diary whatever i learn i share because i want to document it and i don't want to forget it um so you can connect with me there um here is my instagram and anjali sharma is where you can find me on uh, linkedin both the places i share at least two videos every week so saturdays i'll share a real business story um, like the stories you heard today and on every wednesday i will share a quick story insight like today i have shared on linkedin when you use stories to influence in a boardroom you influence with stories but on a stage you inspire with stories and i explain why what's the difference and why you do that so if you want to learn more go there catch me there if you have more questions shoot the questions on those two platforms I always get back. Great. Um, there was like also uh, Ahmed who uh, raised his hand. Ah, Ahmed, come on, ask. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed, uh, we, we can't, oh yeah, we can hear you now, yes. I still can't hear. Okay, we can't hear you. Um, I don't know. Is it just me it's, or? No, 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 it's it's uh, it's also like for for all of us. I think I I can also hear you. So, um, Ahmed, something is not working with your with the microphone. You can type your question, Ahmed, or um, we can answer it that way. Yeah, thanks for also sharing uh, your LinkedIn account. Um, so, like, really great content. So, I'm really consuming your uh, <laughs> your, your your videos, and they are really awesome. So, um, please uh, connect with um, Anjali uh, on LinkedIn as well. Oh, I love this um, body image issues. Is it a gender neutral or uh, specifically for women only? Or both, both, both. You know, the reason why I asked is because um, the number one shame factor 
for women is body image. And number one shame factor for men is being perceived as weak. Um, so I thought that, uh, you know, the body image one definitely works really well uh, for uh, for women, but I think for men as well. Um, okay, wonderful. So, so Amit, you have a question on that. I love your social startup idea. I think it's wonderful. All, all everybody should should listen to more of what you have to say. I think it's such an such a vital and important topic. I think spe speaking is uh, much faster than writing. <laughs> I know, but take your time. I have all the yeah, time all, on this all one. Good, all good. So don't, yeah, don't don't feel pressurized or anything that uh, was about solving the problem of obesity and underweight. Ah, <clears throat> the problem of obesity and underweight, well, think about what it does to people, right? Think about the feeling. So obesity is the problem, but what it does, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Think about this, okay? What you're going to have to do in your social startup pitch, in the story you tell, you're going to create resonance, okay? Now, resonance is a very heavy word, but people don't know what does it actually mean. You're going to create resonance. Resonance literally means remind people of something that they have already experienced, okay? So, Remind people of something they've already experienced. So in the story, you're going to say, and remember that group photo that comes out? And then we all look at the group photo and then we look for our own photo and feel, ooh, I look so bad. And you feel really not happy about how you look because you are overweight or you're underweight and your confidence really gets affected by it. What you really want to be is someone who walks with confidence, right? The identity you chase is that of a confident individual. The feeling is that of lack of confidence. So obesity and underweight leads to what feeling? In my, you know, I'm a mother of a 15-year-old daughter. Um, and it, although she doesn't have any body touch wood by the grace of God image issues, She's surrounded by friends who talk about this stuff all the time. So I see how confidence, being confident as an identity they chase, and obesity and underweight, the feelings, um, it, it can go to societal feelings, you know, the kind of feeling it actually induces. So think about the feelings that actually, um, role of family will be very important for you in that story. Um, the role of family plays in being able to have the diet management of diet and how the families play a very key role. Um, so think hard, your problem is obesity underweight. The feeling it triggers is what? Uh, identity these people chase is what? So if you structure it around that and find a moment and a, be a journalist, find a real story, um, and then become a reporter, structure the story, and then tell it to make the change happen. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking the question. Great. <clears throat> so <clears throat> any, anybody else? Um... No problems at all, Emmett. That's fine. Um, if you, if anybody can't think of a question in the spur of the moment, you're very welcome to just drop me a DM on my social platforms, on my LinkedIn, on my um, Insta, and I will respond to you. <clears throat> That's awesome. Th th thanks a lot uh, for, for for that, b b because I think there, there there might pop some questions uh, like later when when people are uh, shaping their pitch deck. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, so I think, like as mentioned, this was like amazing. I think it was great, uh, great insights and how to build your story uh, f um, for for your social startup. Um, what we would like to have now is a group picture with you um, as our uh, speaker today. Mm -hmm. um, so um, would be great if everybody could um, uh, switch on the camera so we could have like a nice picture, which we can then also post on social media. <clears throat> 
Noha, lovely to see you. <laughs> so, um, Mohammed is. So much. Mo Mo Mohammed is our uh, our photograph. Uh. <laughs> he's he's your photographer. So yeah. lovely to see you all. <laughs> Just wanted to thank you. Really, it was really impressive, and um, I got in touch with you. I have so many questions. Like, I, I'll just craft them and I'll draft you like all the ideas. Yes, and but, yes, please, please send questions. You know, I love questions simply because they test my own knowledge as well. <laughs> so it's okay. good. It's good. Thank you. Okay. Um. So, Mohammed, you make the countdown, and then we all thumb up or. Any other like uh, <laughs> pose? <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Okay, that's it. Let's try it again, maybe. <laughs> okay. Great, thanks a lot. Yes, uh, so I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this great masterclass. Um, for all um, participants who couldn't attend today, um, we will um, also share the, the link of the masterclass, the, the, the recording, so that everybody can um, can really get the great content from you, from, from uh, Ajali. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for, for being here. Um, we will uh, keep you updated regarding the process regarding Founders Hub. Um, please, um, join our uh, WhatsApp group um, to get all the information. Um, we will share it also uh, in our emails. Other than this, um, have a great uh, afternoon and yeah, thanks a lot for being here. Thank you all. Uh, all the best. Hope you all make it to the 29th, you know, the finals. <laughs> and they have to say not just 10, but all 50 get to present. <laughs> so all, all the best to all of you. Um, have a lovely rest of the day. Work hard on finding the real feeling problem that you're, you know, the feeling associated to the problem that you're trying to solve. Structure your story well and always, always stay storied. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.